Okay, here we are with processing. And um, now, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, pressing keys and how processing handles keystrokes. And um, I've showed you this a bit in the, in the Pong game where we uh, move the paddle uh, by pressing keys. And, uh, and so let's just get into it here and see what happens. Uh, here's this example, simple example. Let me, um, let me copy uh, the code here and paste it into the sketch window. There we go. And um, this sketch draws two lines. You can see here's one line, here's another line. Uh, void setup sets up the window, the, the drawing window, background 204. Uh, we draw one line between the point 2020 and then the point x equals 220, y equals 100. Uh, and then if key pressed, we draw a second line that goes from 22020 to 22100. Now, this could be any key that's pressed. And so let's look at that here. Okay, here's the drawing window. And now I'll press the letter V. There we go. I'll press a shift. There. I'll press a command. There. Control. Option. Okay, so. Um, so it's, we do it. The key press command is a Boolean variable. It takes on the value true if we press any key, and otherwise it's false. So if key press is true, it plots the second line. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, the key variable stores the most recent key that has been pressed. That's the key variable. Uh, the data type for key is char character, and it's pronounced char, which is short for character, but usually, yeah, usually pronounced uh, there, tell you how to pronounce it. Okay, unlike a string value, which is distinguished by double quotes, the char data type is specified by single quotes. This is how a char variable is declared and assigned. Char C equals A. So single quotes here and here. And if we try to do this, we'll produce an error. We'll get an error in processing. Same thing with this. So unlike the Boolean variable key pressed reverts to false each time a key is released, the key variable keeps its value until the next key is pressed. So when key takes on an assigned value because we pressed a key, it stays that way until we press another key. So each time a new key is pressed, the value updates and a new character will draw. So let's see how we do this. So we're going to draw some letters. This example introduces text size function uh, to set the size of the letters, the text align function to center the text on its x coordinate, and then the text function to draw the letter. These functions are discussed in fonts on page 94, it says. Okay, let's look at this. Let's copy this sketch here. Okay. And uh, let me run. There. So we have this. What happens if I press a key? There, lowercase g. Now I've released the lowercase g, but set, that stays pressed. Let me press uh, the number 0. There we go. Now let's press some keys that don't correspond to characters, like, like uh, control. And we get just a box. Option, a box. And on my Mac command, a box. Shift a box. So this um, this only gives us a character that looks like when we have, actually have a, a, a character, maybe it has to have an ASCII code. Um, and uh, let's see what they say here later. 
By using an if structure, we can test to see whether a specific key is pressed and choose to draw something on the screen in response. OK. Now, so that's how we do this. OK. That's also pretty simple. Let's check for specific keys. In this example, we test for H or N to be typed. We use the comparison operator, the double equal symbol, to see if the key value is equal to the characters we're looking for. OK. Let's see what goes on here. So let me copy it, and then we'll read through the code and see if we can figure out what it's supposed to be doing. OK, now set the, uh, the drawing box, void draw, background, if key pressed. OK, so here are some new things right here. We say if key is equal to lowercase h, single quotes. Now the double vertical line in processing is the logical or function. We saw that a double ampersand is a logical and double vertical is or. So, and here we check to see does key equal uppercase h. So this is key is either lowercase or an uppercase. If that's the case, then we're going to draw a line. OK, now the line we draw, if we go back over here, so the the line we draw is going to be uh, such that it finishes off either an H or an N. OK, now let me continue on down here, and then we'll come back and, and, and say some more things about that. Now here we have another if statement. If key equals lowercase n or key equals uppercase n, then we draw another line. Now what is a, let's go back up here and look at these two lines. 30, 60. x equals 30, y equals 60 goes to x equals 90, y equals 60. So it has the same y value. So that's a horizontal line. So all we're doing is drawing the horizontal line right here between these two vertical lines. And that makes the letter H. Over here, we're drawing the line that goes from x equal 30, y equal 20. So that's a point in the upper left-hand corner up here. And we're drawing the other end of the line as x equals 90, y equals 100. So we're drawing this diagonal line to finish off the end. OK, pretty clever. We start with two vertical lines, and then we make either an N or an H depending on whether we get a lowercase, uppercase for the H, or a lowercase, uppercase for the N. Now let me, let me uh, draw this. So here is what e we immediately draw. Now notice, uh, let's go through void draw. Remember, void draw repeats 60 times a second. So we do the background. So each time vo through void draw completely erases what happened previously. Now, if we haven't pressed either H or either N, the statements in, in these if, both of these if statements are false. So it doesn't execute, doesn't draw this line, or it doesn't draw this line. The only way we draw this line is if either this or that is true. If neither one is true, it doesn't draw that. Same thing down here. If either one of these is true, it'll draw that, otherwise nothing. Then it draws the two vertical lines right here. So it keeps executing through draw, this draw loop over and over again until we press a key. So I'm going to press lowercase n, and we get that. And I'll press uppercase h, and we get that. OK. Now, um, let's see if there's anything else I want to say about this. Remember, this is now a logical OR. So what have we learned about logical statements that we might put in IF statements? We know that an AND is this, and we know that an OR is that. OK. OK, so now. When we watch for H or N to be pressed, we need to check for both lowercase and uppercase letters. In the event that someone hits the Shift key, 
or has a cap lock set, we combine the two tests together with a logical OR, that the vertical line symbol. And then if we translate the second if statement in this example into plain language, it says the second if statement. Uh, here's the first if statement. Oh, I, I skipped that before my explanation. First, we're checking if key is pressed. So if key is pressed, everything in between these two brackets is executed. If key is not pressed, this isn't executed. Now, um, actually, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, do we actually even need this if statement? So I could check that. I'll put a double comment there. And I'll put a double comment here. I think that's the end of that if statement. No, yeah. Now we'll run. Okay, we still get this. I'll press H. We press N. So I was right. We actually don't need this in order for this code to execute. Why? Because it, it uh, because if key press, let me take this out now. Because if key pressed is, if the key is pressed, it then executes this code, checking for an H or an N. And um, if neither H or N is executed, we get nothing. If either one is executed, we get something. Now, we don't, if we don't have that key pressed if statement in there, it just checks this, this if statement and this sta if statement each time through the draw loop. So it does pretty much the same thing, except here it controls around those two if statements if we haven't pressed any key at all. But they end up giving us the same result in the end. Okay. Now, some keys are more difficult to detect because they aren't tied to particular letters, such as Shift and Alt, the arrow keys. They're called coded keys. Remember, I pressed them and um, here and nothing had. I pressed them in the previous example, and we just got that rectangular box that appeared. Now, um, first we need to check if the key that's been pressed is a coded key. Then we check the code with the key code variable to see which key it is. The most frequently used key code values are Alt, Control, and Shift, as well as the arrow keys up, down, left, and right. Okay, so I'll do one more example here, uh, and then I'll be finished with this video. Move with the arrow keys. Now, I've already done this in the Pong program. Let me copy this. There we go. Seems I'm going to have to add some, um, you know, let me put this return in there. And return here. Return here. Return here. Return here. I'm trying to make it look as much like this as possible. Okay. I don't have all the indentation right here. Okay. Okay, we have void draw. F is indented. Now I know I want to put this back up on that line. There we go. Now indent this. Tap, tap. Then we'll put this back up there. 
Now we put this in there. There. Else if. Remember, this is actually part of this if statement right here. Now, so the whole idea in the indentation is to give you some idea what pieces of code go along with what other pieces of code. I hope I have this right. The second if statement is indented because it's contained in this if statement, right? This if statement goes from this bracket to this bracket. This if statement goes from this bracket to that bracket. Th this else if goes here to here. Then this finishes the draw loop, and then that's it. So. What do we do here? Let me jump down to here. First, we press, we check, is key pressed? If key is pressed, is it a coded key? This checks to see if it's a coded key. Okay, so if it's a coded key, then we see is the key code left? Now, if the left arrow, then we take the X value and we decrement it by one and then if the key code if it's the right arrow here we take the x value and we increment it by one and then we plot this rectangular box that goes from x to y equal 45 to x equals 50 y equal 50 so we draw a box and the left x position of the rectangle changes depending on which arrow key we're pressing. So let's see what happens with that. Unexpected token, you see, uh, oh, of course, I've never made this mistake before. I need a space in there uh, for this integer variable x. Now let's try it. So here's our box. So right arrow. So see that? It's moving forward. Left arrow, we have that right there. Now, notice that we're, it leaves these pla this place here black in there. Now, how can we avoid that? Well, we can avoid that by setting the background. Um, background 204. Let's try this void draw, and let's begin by setting background Two o four, just like that. Now let's run the code. There's our box. Right arrow, left arrow. Okay, so that's um, that's all I have to say right now about um, about pressing keys. Um, and like I said, uh, I actually first I think introduced this with the Pong code. If you go back, look at that code, you'll see there are key presses involved in that. Okay, so that's it. See you next time.